Hi everyone. In the past few videos with the projects that I've built, I was repeatedly faced with one simple challenge of creating a permanent PCB for the project that I was developing. So after I was done with creating the project on the breadboards, I had to get out the PCBs and from there immediately started soldering connections on the bottom of the PCB so I could finalize the project and make a permanent enclosure and permanent connection for what that project is. Because of that, I got to the idea that I can create a permanent PCB that would be the basis of the projects like that. So I've partnered with PCB Way to create a project board that I can then reuse for this type of projects. Now, PCB Way sent some awesome gifts. So I want to thank them for that and for always providing awesome quality PCBs. As you can see, PCB Way not only that provides great quality PCBs, it also provides really awesome looking 3D prints. I'm personally not into 3D printing yet, so that may be changed. But if you are into 3D printing, then be sure to check them out because you can order and manufacture awesome parts for your projects and not only 3D printing, but also CNC machining. So they got you with anything that you have in terms of manufacturing for your project. And for the PCB itself, you can see um, it has a position for node MCU. So that sits like this, uh, but instead I'm gonna use headers to solder them. So the node MCU can be removable. I tend to have it removable, so whenever I need to, I don't know, swap it or do something else, I can easily remove it and not have to unsolder it. And next to that, there is also additional header position that will allow us to have access to all of the pins once the microcontroller is in there. On the left, we have place for a power supply. The power supply that this board is designed to use is this one is the Hylink HLK PM01, which is a 220 volts, actually 100 to 240 volts input and five volts up to three watts on the output. So this should be really more than enough for most of our projects. So we can put that as well on the PCB and that fits perfectly. And then we have some positions on the top and on the bottom where we can add this type of screw connectors. These are five millimeters apart in the pins, so we can place that up to the board and we can also solder it there. So later we can have the wires connected to, uh, to the outlet. So this will be powered from 220 volts. Here we're gonna have two more screw terminals like this one where on the first one, we're gonna have a direct five volt output coming out from the power supply. And then on the uh, J3 connection, we're gonna have the 3.3 volts that are coming from the onboard regulator of the node MCU. And those five and 3.3 volts are also distributed on the bottom of the PCB. So five volts is on the left, 3.3 volts is on the right. And then, they are also distributed on all of the connections that are on the right, where we have the DHT connector. We have a position for an analog sensor. We have position for I square C. We have position for relays and we have positions for uh, SPA communication as well as the serial. So the hardware serial and also another software serial that shares some of these pins. The plan for today is to show you how this board works by making an environment monitor that I then plan to use in my living room. So we can have the node MCU connected to Wi-Fi, monitoring the temperature of the and humidity of the room through DHT22 and feeding that data to home, home automation. So let's start soldering now.
If you want to learn more about how I designed this board, then be sure to check out the video up here. I'm going through the entire design process with Ultim Designer and then ordering through PCBWay. So be sure to check it out. So in theory, this is now our project done. I can connect the Node MCU to the headers here. I have access to all of the pins of the Node MCU in case I need to do or measure something. And I also added a header where I could now connect the DHT22 just by inserting it into the header. And with that, we're gonna have a proper project. But before I do that and continue within setting up the code, I'll first connect the AC input and I'll use my multimeter to measure out the voltages to make sure that I have the right voltages on the right places so I don't burn up the Node MCU or the DHT uh, sensor. So Let's first verify that. I do have the board now plugged in, so I'll be a bit more careful touching it. Now I have the meter in 250 volts AC. So let's see if we get the AC here and we get 238 volts. Okay, that's as expected. Now let's see what we get on the output. This one should be five volts. So we have five volts on the left. And that's exactly five volts. And this one at the moment, it will be empty because we do not have the board uh, in place. So this one will be powered from uh, the node MCU once we have it, but we can go around and check the presence of five volts on the headers. And this is the headers that we have here on the left with five volts, 3.3 will be empty but let's also check the rest of the board. And we have five volts on the corner. That's correct. Uh, and all of the rest should be zero volts for now. So five volts, five volts. This is 3.3, which is not connected. And where's, here's five volt, that's correct. 3.3, that's correct. And this one is 3.3, so it's, off. Now I'll disconnect this from the mains. Currently I have no idea what program I have on here, but that's not really important. We saw that we get five volts from the output and I want to test the 3.3 volt uh, rail on the board. So I'll plug this in once again. Okay, we are now plugged in. Let's check five volts again. We got five volts. And also I'm going to confirm that we have five volts on the VN. Yes, we get, so technically we should now have the 3.3 rail as well. And we do have it. So these are all coming together. So everywhere we should be able to get the 3.3 volts as expected. Awesome. So now, we're off to programming and finalizing this project. Uh, before plugging in the USB power, one really important note is that you disconnect the AC input. So we are never powering the project from AC and USB at the same time. Technically that should not be a problem because this should be isolated, but we can never be sure for that. And we don't want to 
add an extra 5 volts that will then go to the computer, possibly destroying the PC. So be sure to always have the project disconnected from the mains when you do the programming. And before starting with the Home Assistant and the ESP Home that I'm going to use for the sensor, I wanted to test it out with standard Arduino. So I used the DHT stable library and it's sample sketch for DHT22 sensor. And you can see in the console down below that we are currently getting the current humidity at 54.2 and the current temperature is 21.3 degrees Celsius. So this confirms that the module works, that the, all the connections are good and that we are getting a good reading from the DHT sensor. So I'll now continue to set the device up with Home Assistant. Just a quick disclaimer. I'm just testing out Home Assistant, so I'm no expert in it. And this is basically my first device other than my air conditioning systems that I have in the Home Assistant. So I might do some things wrong, but bear with me and hopefully we can bring this system to be more versatile and to be more functional for all of us. So to start setting up, I first went into the add-on store and searched for the ESP Home add-on for our Home Assistant. This add-on allows us to connect ESP devices to Home Assistant and provide them with custom functionality. So after installing that and starting the service, I went ahead to the web UI where I've proceeded to set up and add a new device. When we click on the add new device button, we get some description on how this whole thing works. And because I haven't set up the HTTPS access, it warns me that uh, I won't be able to directly program the ESP from uh, ESP Home. I was hoping that I can use the web version instead. So I proceeded with the setup where I've specified the device name as well as the device connection information for my home Wi-Fi network. So I've set the name, I've set the network name as well as the network password. And I was then presented with an option to select the device that I own. I first thought that selecting an ESP8266 will be enough, but then I realized that I can choose the specific board that I have, which in my case is the Node MCU. So I selected Node MCU and on the next window, I was presented with a pop-up that told me that the device is created and I, and I should now install it. So when I choose the install, I was asked how I want to install it. And since this is the first time that I'm programming the device, the option is to manually install it. So via a cable, if you have HTTPS enabled, then you can do it directly from Home Assistant. But since I didn't have HTTPS, so I proceeded to the web install, but unfortunately after following the procedure and uploading the correct file, I was still unable to install the firmware to the device. I tried this install process several times, both with the holding the boot button, trying to put the Node MCU into a proper booting state to accept the new firmware, but without any success. So I then found out about the ESP Home Flasher tool that you can run from the computer and I gave it a go. You can find the link into the description together with all of the uh, materials and everything that I've used. So I've downloaded the 64-bit Windows version because I'm running Windows. And with it, I was able to properly select my COM4 port, which had my board connected. And I was able to properly flash the firmware to the device without any issues. After the firmware was installed, I went back to the ESP home uh, web UI page and I saw that in there the device was now appearing as online. So in order to add the device to my uh, integration, I copied the, integ the encryption key and I was asked for it when I went to add the newly discovered device. I chose the area which is the living room and after I finished adding the device, I could see the device but I couldn't see any entities on the device. And to be able to create the entities and recognize what this device can be, we need to edit the YAML file where I've just copied this from an example about the DHT sensor where I just needed to specify which pin is uh, the DHT sensor connected to. In my case, it was D0 and it was now time to save and install this update to the device. Since we already have 
ESP home running on the device, we can choose to connect and update the device wirelessly. And you can see that the installation now started immediately. And after a while, it uh, finished with a success. So the device rebooted. And I was then able to see the entities when I went again to see the device. As you can see here, we're already having the temperature and humidity within the living room. But if we go to the devices, we can uh, now see the two entities and we can choose to add a dedicated card to the dashboard. And we can now see that we have the living room temperature and humidity on two places, both on the living room card and on the HA living room monitor page. So after I was sure that everything works, I went to um, create an enclosure for the device where I used an electrical box. I wanted to have the sensor placed on the outside, so I extended the cable and I added the header pin. Uh, the sensor is mounted on the electrical box lid, so it sits outside and measures the conditions on the outside. I connected to the AC cable that I wanted to use, made sure to secure the board to the electrical box with uh, some hot glue and also secured all of the connections on the cable so nothing gets loose in the box. And here is the finalized version of the monitor. I've cut a small opening on the lid of this electrical box so the sensor can stick out and actually measure the temperature on the outside and to mitigate any heating that might happen from the power supply that's hidden within, I made two holes on the top and two holes on the bottom where the air can circulate naturally through the box and exit from the back. So this will be mounted on the wall next to my current thermostat that I use with my pallet stove and will sit on top of it uh, on the wall and it will be plugged in all the time so I can monitor the temperature and the humidity of the room. For now, this will be its sole purpose, so there won't be anything else. I just want to monitor the temperature and see how it relates with the current thermostat. And maybe later on we can upgrade the system. You can see within the, um, within the Home Assistant, I already have the boat the temperature and the humidity both on the living room card as well as a dedicated card that's from the device and you can see the current humidity is at 50 percent and current uh, temperature this is now in my office is 23.7 degrees celsius so i hope that the, you like this video if you think that this is an interesting project then be sure to subscribe down below i'm gonna have more projects coming up soon and before you go, you can also check out this other video that I think you're going to like really well.